Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, How Programmatic Advertising Can Give CPG Brands a Major Boost. My name is Amanda Benavidez, and I'm part of the marketing team here at Stack Adapt. Before getting started, we just have some housekeeping items to cover, and then we can get the webinar underway. We're happy to field any questions you might have on any of the content, so please feel free to place them in the questions area of the GoToWebinar panel. We'll address all questions at the end of our session during the Q&A. If there are any questions we're not able to address in the allotted time, we'll follow up directly after the webinar. And just a quick note, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared shortly after we end. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to our presenters today to introduce themselves. Thanks, Amanda, and welcome everybody to today's webinar. And Keita and I are really excited to walk through uh, how you can make the most of CPG advertising going into traditionally the biggest time of the year, which is back to school, Thanksgiving, and the December holiday seasons. To kick things off, we can give a bit of introduction to who we are. And my name is Brandon, and I'm a senior sales director at Stack Adapt, and I've been here for about five and a half years. And in that time, we've seen a really strong evolution in how the programmatic media space approaches CPG and retail campaigns. And looking forward to sharing some of my experiences and, and overall thoughts on the industry. And I'll pass it off to Ankita for her introduction, and then we'll jump right in. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We really appreciate it. My name's Ankita. I'm a account director here at Stack Adapt, and I'm actually on Brandon's team. I've been at Stack Adapt for a little over three years now, and during my time here at Stack Adapt, I've had the pleasure of both planning, executing a multitude of retail and CPG campaigns. And prior to Stack Adapt, I was actually agency side as well, where I specialized in planning campaigns across Fortune 500 brands. So hopefully today we can take a little bit of that knowledge and share it with you guys, and hopefully everyone can walk out of here learning something new. And Brandon, I'll give it back to you. Thanks, Ankita. And we actually have a ton of people here. And uh, what we're also seeing is that people have a variety of titles and backgrounds. So before jumping into the agenda, we wanted to provide a brief recap on who Stack Adapt is and what we do. And put simply, Stack Adapt is a DSP or demand side platform allowing advertisers to plan, execute, and analyze digital media campaigns. And it's just my opinion, but I'd like to think we're pretty good at it. With that being said, we can jump right into the agenda of what we're going to talk about today. And we always like to start things by going over general industry and advertising trends within the vertical we're talking about. And then from there, taking a look at the ideal consumer journey across that vertical. And from there, jumping into things like targeting methods and strategies, measuring for performance, and different creative ad units you can use in the CPG space, while wrapping up for a general Q&A, which we hope is lively and very interactive. With that said, today, we're going to focus on how we approach the CPG and retail space and how you, as marketers, can make the most of the upcoming holiday seasons. To kick things off, we're going to talk about industry trends. And it's important to lay some groundwork on today's discussion. And the next few slides are going to give context to just how much investment is being put into the CPG and retail vertical. If we look at the graph on the slide, retail and CPG continue to dominate share of global ad spend, accumulating around 50% of total market share. And that's an enormous quantity. And Really, I think it's it's just the reality of products and services entering a you know a stage of where we are, where there's so much parity and so much competition. And with that, I think it's important to understand why and why there's so much investment going into the digital advertising side of things. And there's many plausible hypotheses, but one that we like to focus on more at Stack Adapt is that. Traditionally, up until a few years ago, marketing dollars were always living as an expense on a balance sheet. Uh, marketing was a cost of doing business, and as such, it was reflected as so. 
but with so much sophistication in today's marketing world and the ability to measure absolutely everything, we're seeing marketing dollars shift from an expense on a balance sheet to a cost of goods sold, becoming a necessity with so many brands and retail stores having parity and competing with each other. And with that being said, total CPG sales continue to grow in 2022. And as we continue to trend towards a post-COVID world, many brands have seen a huge increase year over year in sales. I think this is especially relevant in the e-commerce space, where if we go back to the theme of you know, shifting marketing expenses to cost of goods sold, the development and measurability of online metrics gives us as brands and advertisers, much more concrete evidence to how marketing investment impacts sales. And with the past two years having had significant impact on marketing budgets, we find that marketers are shifting more to channels and mediums that can very clearly show ROI and return on ad spend versus things that are slightly more arbitrary. It's no secret that the advertising world has been fairly turbulent over the past year and a half. Uh, thank you, Google. And everyone is trying to prepare for the next era of digital marketing and how we're going to target people once cookies surely disappear. Reflecting on this and what's to come in the digital marketing space, there are a lot of solutions that are starting to float around. There's not one defined answer to what we're going to do in uh, a post cookie world. But I think something you know, we definitely agree with internally is that CPG and retail brands are extremely well positioned to continue having strong results without using third party cookies. And obviously, alternative strategy and targeting tactics that come from third party cookie loss are going to become more and more popular. First party data has become even more valuable and we're expecting to see more and more brands pushing for loyalty signups and newsletters at any option possible to then leverage that data and re-engage with existing customers and interested customers. And we're also seeing the huge return of uh, contextual advertising with the right place and right time mentality. Uh, it's making a huge comeback from the early 2000s without any of the shortfalls it used to have. I think something else that's really important to reflect upon um, as digital marketers or as consumers is that people don't really want to be mercilessly retargeted anymore by products that they've browsed previously, whether it's because they've purchased them or they just feel like their privacy is being uh, breached with that. Instead, they want relevant products in front of them based on their needs without explicitly calling out that you've been browsing about this for the past three months. With that being said, I think it's also important to contextualize the general consumer journey that we see is very popular in the CPG space, where we have the ability as digital marketers in 2022 to run campaigns across the entire consumer journey. And marketers now have the trackability to understand how everything works together and the tactics used to build awareness and consideration might be entirely different than lower funnel execution. But understanding how everything we're doing from the awareness and consideration phase impact conversion and evaluation will give marketers and brands the ability to effectively measure what's working and what's not in real time. That doesn't just apply to the online space, but with the ever evolving nature of attribution, we're also getting a pretty clear picture on how digital advertising and digital media spend is impacting offline sales metrics to give us the complete picture of cost of goods sold. With that being said, as the digital advertising ecosystem continues to expand and privacy continues to be at the forefront of all discussion, it's important to know and understand your audience through data orchestration. And understanding them through safe and privacy compliant data points will give you a very clear picture on how users are moving through that consumer journey, what's working, what isn't, and real-time pivots and activation that you'll be able to take as a result of that. 
With that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Ankita, who's going to jump into more detail on how we can do all of this and run through the rest of our discussion. Thank you so much, Brandon. So we're going to kick things off with targeting. Um, targeting typically is the most asked about question when you're beginning your media planning process because you want to understand how to target these specific audiences. With increased online shopping behaviors, consumers tend to have fewer in-person touch points with products right now, and ultimately this is making discovery more challenging. So as you can see on the slide, there's a ton of different targeting strategies you can leverage, but each targeting method actually aligns specifically with where your user is in their actual journey. So for example, when you're looking at an upper funnel tactic, you want to work with browsing segments or page context AI to contextually target audience based on what they're searching, whether it's through keywords, phrases, topics, contextual web pages, you want to direct your customers to your e-commerce landing page to ensure that they're learning about the product and your product is top of mind. When you're actually looking to get a purchase, you want to ensure that you're reaching your cons consumers in a concise but not creepy way. So a lot of the times we recommend placing pixels on product pages and leveraging dynamic retargeting to essentially re-engage them and encourage them towards making a purchase. But like we said, we don't know what's gonna happen with the cookie apocalypse thanks to Google. So you really wanna strengthen and invest in transactional first party data. So a lot of brands are actually working with investing in ways to collect more robust first party data solutions, whether it's through an initiative such as SMS marketing, email marketing, loyalty programs, you really want to build those audiences so that you can use those audiences to leverage lookalike audience and create those CRM audiences to target those users as well. Especially when it comes to your holiday back to school planning, it will really be useful in order to make sure your costs are, are limited. Page context AI. Um, we've kind of thrown around the word contextual targeting a lot and you might be asking, what can we do that's different here? Well, this patent pending technology with Stack Adapt really allows you to get very granular with your targeting. And what you can do is you can actually plug in in context phrases and out of context phrases. A great example I like to give is if I'm looking for iPhone shopping during Q4, I'm going to search iPhone, Apple as an in context phrase and an out of context phrase would be Apple fruit. And what this will do is it will actually preview all the domains beforehand. So you as an advertiser can see where you're going to be serving on what pages, what web pages, what content, how it's going to look in the advertising space. And more importantly, a lot of the times the concerns with brand and CPG retail is that brand safety. You don't know where your ads are going to be served in the programmatic space, but with this, you have the ability to actually scale and see where you'll be serving. And ultimately, because it's done in real time and it's so concise, your CPA tends to be a lot more effective. This is a great example to actually show you how that page context AI will work. If someone is looking for a recipe for, say, barbecue salmon, they might also be interested in upgrading their barbecue game. So if you're selling barbecue cooking supplies and, you know, I see an ad for cooking supplies while I'm in the mind looking up recipes, I as a user am more likely to engage and go and click through on the ad because it's serving a purpose where I'm already looking. Measuring performance. So we all know with branding and retail and CPG upper funnel campaigns are very important. But what's more important is actually showing our end clients at the end of the day the row assets coming from those ads. So how can we measure this performance? Well, a great way to do that is through a brand lift or a sales study. And what's great about working with Stack Adapt specifically is because we are a multi-channel solution, we can actually show quantifiable return on all of the campaigns that you run. And you can run this through any um, format. So basically you can do it through CTV, OTT, audio, and you'll be able to see the synergy across all your campaigns. But more so, we need to keep in mind with brand loyalty disrupted, consumers are now willing to try new brands and there's a lot of cooped up spend from the pandemic where people are looking to shop more. So you want to ensure that your brand is top of mind, but you also want to show that you're actually resulting in sales from your brand lift study. So this is a great way to do it, and we work with the different partners, Comscore and Upwave, but we can also do it through Stack Adapt internally with the Stack Adapt brand lift. What's great about the Stack Adapt brand lift is 
it's not cookie cutter and you can actually go ahead and customize all of your questions specifically. So instead of just saying, have you seen this brand before or have you seen a video ad? As you can see with this specific example, it says, would you try the granola of the future? And what this does is it gives you the ability to actually customize the questions, but also customize your answers. So with each answer, you can actually link out to a different landing page and see how users are interacting. And like I said previously, this can be done through all formats, whether it's CTV, audio. You may not have budget to run brand lift at a certain time, but you can even set look back windows. So if someone's seen your CTV ad two months prior, you can go ahead and work with an exposed versus non-exposed group and serve them those ads to see how people are interacting with your ads as well. It's a great tactic to really just show within the reporting and just show, you know, it's important to see what your checkout pages are working, how your pay now buttons are working, and just overall just get that return on ad spend because reporting plays such an important role across the entire pipeline and equal attention really should be paid to the whole conversion journey itself. Foot traffic. Definitely something we want to keep in mind in addition to a sales lift or brand study. You know, with back to school, Q4 approaching, a lot of people are spending time in malls. And like I said, with the pandemic, people want to get out there, people want to shop in person. So you really want to incorporate a foot traffic attribution study to understand in-store visitation patterns and then determine the incremental impact of your campaigns and ultimately measure the cost per store visit to show your clients that, hey, my ads actually translated into an in-person sale. Creative. So Gone are the days really where a one size fit approach works for creative. You really want to get consumers excited to spend money they've saved up during the pandemic and treat themselves. And you can do this through creative units, specifically the one we want to showcase first is the carousel unit. And you just look at it and you can see the pop of color. It's inviting. It's customizable. And to be honest, it's just not boring. And basically what you want to do is create that messaging and show users that there's a seamless online to offline customer experience by incorporating popular solutions. So in this example, you can see we're showcasing the different outfits, how to play with the different outfits and giving the users what they want. You ultimately need to show them what your product is giving, whether it's a click and collect, buy now, pay later, or a smooth return process, the actual unit has to show some kind of value add. This is also a great one because you want to show the user the entire product, but you also want to make it fun and interactive. So here's a look showcasing how you can put together an entire outfit. But what's great is you're giving the user all the information they need in one unit itself. They can click on the different items, see how much it would cost to put together an entire unit. And it's basically focusing on how you can see what the actual unit would look like in real time. You need to ensure that your messaging is authentic, but also matching the look and feel of your brand because brands are ultimately using engagement nowadays to pull people in because you don't know who's behind the screen and you want to ensure they're entertained. With increased online shopping behaviors, customers have fewer in-person touch points, like I said. So by implementing AR technologies like this, you're able to get their interest and they can try it before they actually go and make a purchase. So for example, for someone who's looking to buy a couch and furniture shopping, this is a great idea because they can actually visualize what the whole product would look like within a living room. And then they can get an idea whether this would look and match their feel of their living room. And ultimately, you just want to be able to give people a little bit of fun with the creative and let them engage with it. Dynamic retargeting, we touched on this as well, but essentially cart abandoners, like we said, we don't want to be creepy, but we do want to be cognizant and be top of mind when they're making a purchase. Now more than ever, people are very quick to determine if they want a product or not, and you want to set that look back window so you're getting them within that first two weeks of engagement and just serving them that ad. You can also control the reach frequency, but it's a great tactic to just be top of mind, especially when people haven't made a purchase. We are also directed 
with Shopify and how that will work is upon each refresh, Shopify's will pull a different ad unit and you will be able to set UTM parameters within each unit and actually see that in reporting. It's a great tactic because you're gonna get the different variations, users will engage with it, and you're actually able to see that reporting in product and show the different collections of products. And ultimately you can even see which products people are engaging with the most in order to understand your user journey and consumer patterns. So we've talked about a lot of different tactics today and how to kind of work around with retail and CPG. But to wrap it up, the things that we wanna talk about the most are, Number one, incorporate a multi-channel approach. You really want to bridge the gap between online to offline. There's a ton of different brands out there, a ton of different choices. People rarely will just walk into a store and say, I'm going to buy this brand. Most people are doing their research beforehand and you want to ensure you're getting them when they're in their research phase. And that brings me to point number two. How do you do that? leverage those targeting strategies. We've talked a ton about contextual advertising today, but it really is the best way to ensure you're reaching people when they're researching about those products and looking up and you wanna to be top of frame of mind. And then last but not least, utilize those studies to determine the impact your media has made. You really wanna show the ROAS at the end of the day, show that your brand is having a lift in measurement. And a great time to do this is especially during Q4 when there's so many brands, it's a great way to understand, is my brand standing out? Am I making that impact? Thank you so much for listening, everyone. We also do have a programmatic playbook. There'll be a link at the bottom, I believe. And take a look, you know, there's a ton of great tactics in there, especially with your Q4 and Back to school planning coming up we definitely encourage you to read it and i'm going to hand it back to amanda for q a perfect thank you so much brandon and ankita so we'd now like to jump into the q a portion of the webinar and open up the floor to any questions you might have um, as a reminder if you have any questions just place them in the questions box of the go to webinar panel so it looks like we have some questions coming in through now so we'll tackle what we can here. All right, so first question. Uh, does data get passed back to Stack Adapt about conversions to help optimize campaigns? And how does that work? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take that one. So by default, our Stack Adapt pixel uh, will pass back just uh, conversion as a whole, but we do have custom parameters that you can apply in addition to our standard conversion pixel, which as a result of that will pass uh, dynamic conversion data back into the platform. Uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward to set up and you can pull back things like uh, purchase price, uh, product, order ID, really anything you want. And then you'll have the ability to not only optimize to things like return on ad spend, but also have conversion verification within our conversion journey tool to match back uh, all of that conversion data with uh, your internal data. Really easy to set up. If you want to learn any more about it, please reach out to either your respective account manager um, or the Stack Adapt request page within uh, the Stack Adapt website, and we'd be happy to talk more about it. Great. So I guess a question to go along with that is, uh, how easy is it to get the pixel setup that you mentioned? Do I need my dev team involved? I can take that one. Um, you can work with your dev team or you can do it yourself. Typically it's done through Google Tag Manager and it's just a pixel that you place in the global floodlight of the universal page. If you need help, we can definitely walk you through how to do it as well, but it usually is just done through your GTM floodlight. We also do have documentation to walk you through if you need help with it, but it's a fairly easy process typically. Perfect. Okay, next question here. Um, on some of the ads that you showcased, are you able to specifically position um, those hotspot areas where you'd like, um, or is it kind of like an automated placement? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a wonderful creative team in-house that would help work with those ads. Typically, you would have a session with the creative strategist beforehand, and you can choose where you would like those hotspots. It's completely customizable, and we would be able to help you across the way to ensure the ad looks exactly like how you want it to. Okay, next question. Um, so uh, as a CPG brand just getting started with programmatic, um, how do you convince those types of clients the benefits of programmatic channels like CTV? Um, 
would you recommend a specific channel to get started or all of them at once? What's your recommendation? Yeah, I can take that. So the beauty about connected TV is when comparing it to broadcast is one, the cost, it's typically a fraction of the cost. Broadcast can get very expensive, but more so the real niche lies in the targeting. When a lot of the times you're working with broadcast and traditional audiences, it's typically just to buy premium specialty or a very generic audience where it would be women 25 or males 25 plus with connected tv what you can do is you can really create those custom audiences so you can actually apply when people are searching for your specific products based on topics and phrases you can leverage any seo or sem keywords you have and apply those for your audiences but more so everything's done in real time with broadcast, sometimes you have to wait six months out for a post report to understand how your audiences are actually performing. With connected TV, you can see it in real time, but you can also get that attribution. It's not just a fluffy metric. So if someone sees your connected TV ad and then they decide, hey, I'm very interested in this product, I'm gonna go on the landing page, you can actually attribute back a view through conversion to show your client that, hey, it's actually bringing in conversions and then vice versa we can even apply a qr code on the connected tv ad so if someone sees that connected tv ad they can go in scan that qr code if they're interested and we can make that a conversion event and mark that in the platform as well so there's a ton of different ways you can leverage connected tv versus broadcast but the biggest differentiator would be adding that programmatic targeting audience to your actual connected tv ads great Okay, next question. Um, you mentioned you're able to run brand lift studies with CT CTV and OTT. Can you explain a little bit more how that works? Yeah, I can jump in there and the methodology is fairly straightforward uh, for all of our brand lift or persuasion lift studies that we run. Uh, we're building that within the platform itself and because Stack Adapt has its own cross device identity graph, we're able to measure responses from a mobile or desktop device that's originated from uh, CTV or OTT exposure. And normally what we'll do is have an exposed and control group where we'll ask uh, a control group that has not been exposed to CTV, OTT messaging, the same question uh, as those who have been exposed and then measure uh, the incremental difference in results and use that as the basis to uh, accurately report back on brand lift, persuasion lift, or, or any other questions we're asking as a result of media exposure. All right, final question here. Um, are there any minimums to get started with Stack Adapt? So uh, Stack Adapt as a platform is entirely performance-based. That is our retention model. Um, so generally speaking, no, there are no uh, firm minimums to get started with Stack Adapt. It's a pay-as-you-go platform. Uh, with that being said, we typically uh, look for a uh, 5K minimum testing budget to ensure that you're gonna have enough data to accurately uh, measure Stack Adapt's performance against who you're currently using. Uh, if you do have any more questions about that, feel free to reach out to either Ankita or myself or your respective account executive and account manager, and they'll be able to give you uh, as much context as you need to ensure that you're fully ready to get set up uh, and running successful campaigns with the Stack Adapt platform. Wonderful. All right. So those are all the questions we have for today. Uh, so thank you so much once again, Brandon and Nankita, for this presentation. Um, and that concludes today's webinar. So thank you all for attending. We hope you found it both informative and insightful. We'll be sending out a follow-up email with a recording and the CPG playbook to all registrants. So please don't hesitate to reach out with any other questions you might have. Thanks again for joining us, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.